Welcome to more on covalent bonding. In this lesson, we're going to go into greater detail on covalent bonds and molecules that form covalent bonds. We've talked about how atoms of elements can form covalent bonds by sharing their valence electrons so that both atoms that are forming the bond can reach octets in their valence shell. It typically looks like this. You know, we see chlorine uh, and it can form a covalent bond with another chlorine uh, because each chlorine has seven valence electrons and we want we want them both to get to eight so what they can do is share these two electrons and form a covalent bond that's what we've talked about so far the simplest case of covalent bonding however if we looked at a molecule like carbon monoxide CO Carbon monoxide, uh, when we look at the bonding that occurs with the valence electrons, we're going to see something interesting. So let's get the electron dots for carbon and oxygen down. Carbon has four valence electrons and oxygen has six. So how are they going to reach an octet? Well, let's start sharing pairs of electrons. We can share this pair, and we can share this pair. And then you'll notice that oxygen has run out of free electrons to share. And oxygen, if we count it up, we'll see is at an octet. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So oxygen's all set here, but carbon's not. So why does this molecule exist? I mean, we know carbon monoxide exists. Why does this molecule exist if it looks like we can't reach an octet for both? Well, the answer is this really does form an octet for carbon, and that's because uh, covalent bonding really is about sharing electrons and we have to really think about what that means the reason that they're sharing electrons is so that they can both reach an octet well as it turns out oxygen can actually donate a pair of electrons and share them just like it was doing with the single electrons so oxygen will end up sharing a pair of electrons that it donates completely on its own to form another bond between oxygen and carbon this bond it forms is called a coordinate bond. And when we write the Lewis structure for this, it's going to look something like this. We have carbon. We have those two bonds, that double bond in, uh, that we circled in yellow over there. And then this coordinate bond we said is a pair of electrons being shared. We're going to represent like this. Okay, a little arrow from the oxygen to the carbon showing that it's a bond but the electrons in that bond are not from both atoms. They're only from the oxygen being contributed in this direction. Our last step, of course, would be to fill in the non-bonding pairs of electrons. So carbon has two electrons left over. Oxygen has two electrons not being shared in bonds. And with this arrangement, both atoms have full valence shells. The carbon has eight electrons in the valence shell, and so does oxygen. The next thing we're going to talk about is an interesting situation that arises when you have a molecule uh, that has a combination of single bonds and multiple bonds. For these molecules where there's a combination of single bonds and multiple bonds, frequently the Lewis structures are not entirely accurate. So let's look at an example. O3 is the ozone molecule. Now when we draw the structure for ozone, we're going to see something like this. We have three oxygens, and we know each oxygen has six valence electrons. Now we want to see what bonds they form, so we're going to start making octets. We can start by sharing these two over here, these two over here, and this gets contributed that way. After sharing the electrons like this, each oxygen has eight valence electrons. So let's clean up this drawing a little bit, and we will see that we have an oxygen with a single bond to an oxygen, with a double bond to another oxygen. For now I'm just going to ignore the coordinate bond that's on the first and second oxygen over here and just represent it with a single bond. And then I'm going to fill in my non-bonding pairs of electrons. Okay, so we have this structure of the molecule. This would be the Lewis structure for this ozone molecule. Now let's number these oxygens just to have a little bit more ease in talking about them. So this will be oxygen 1, this will be oxygen 2, and this will be oxygen 3. If this Lewis structure were entirely accurate, the bond between oxygen 1 and oxygen 2 would be different than the bonding between oxygen 2 and oxygen 3. In fact, this bond would be a single bond, and this bond would be a double bond. 
Now that means something in terms of the structure of the molecule. Double bonds hold the atoms slightly closer to each other. Also, there'd be an unevenness in where the electrons are in this molecule, because it implies that there are more electrons being shared between two and three than there are between one and two. However, in reality, the ozone molecule is symmetrical. But why does the Lewis structure not show this? Well, the Lewis structure assumes that the electrons are localized. They're stuck wherever we draw them in. But in this molecule, they're not really localized. They can move around a little bit. They can reorganize themselves. And so what we see is that this structure is equally as valid as this structure. So what have I done to get to this structure? Well, it's actually not all that complicated. Basically, this pair of electrons here has jumped onto this molecule, and this pair of electrons here has moved into this bond. So you might start to see how this could just flip back and forth from going from right to left, the picture on the right to the picture on the left, I could show that these pair of electrons now jump and start sharing over here, while the pair of electrons in this bond returns to this oxygen over here. So because the electrons are always moving and able to flip back and forth between these two states, neither one of these structures is entirely correct, and neither one is wrong. In reality, the bonds between oxygen 1 and oxygen 2 and the bond between oxygen 2 and oxygen 3 are exactly equivalent. There's no difference between them. And we explain this by saying that the actual molecule is an average between this state on the left and this state on the right. These two states are called resonance structures. I'm going to clean this up a little bit and show us what the notation is for resonance structures. So we have the one version has a single bond that way and a double bond that way. I'm going to leave off the non-bonding electrons just for the sake of uh, quickness, but they would still be there. And the other option was to have the double bond to the first oxygen and the single bond to the third oxygen. So here are my two uh, resonance structures, and I'm going to put a double-headed arrow between them, showing that it basically flips back and forth, and I put it in brackets. And these are called the resonance structures for this molecule. That wraps up this lesson on coordinate bonds and resonance structures. Uh, any questions you have from this lesson, make sure you write them down in your notes and bring them in with you to class.